Thank you for the talk. I was really looking forward to that for your discussion starter, and now we're going to extend that a lot. So let's just take a breather and thank you. Religious content is not something we have every time or every day. Obviously, there's always a <laughs> there's always a preacher called Sasha Lobo here, but and that we, we usually have like ethics of media and journalism. But what is the difference between what what you did here that you didn't want to call a sermon? What is the difference between a classical keynote and what you did? I'm not sure that the difference is really that big. From it's about the same length. Actually, you were faster than most of them, but yeah, true, I was fast. Um, I'm a person who, when she comes here, speaks as a pastor, obviously. I'm not going to hide words like God, but obviously I will have to take into account that not everyone has the same background or the same background knowledge about the images I use. And I'm actually happy to have found so many theologians here because we have something to say and it's often the case that we sit behind the walls of our churches and we don't get our message out as much. This is your first Republica, right? Which is obviously curious because you're doing so much online and you're one of those few priests who really embrace the new the social media and new technology and how are you feeling here? Yeah, I'm actually really, I'm really happy about it. It's great here. I really like the accepting environment. So many different people from so many different areas. It's very diverse. Even, even we have the feeling as theologians that church is not something that you see in our daily lives anymore. But I've, I've already been part of a talk before here. And I'm actually sad that I already have to leave again tonight because tomorrow I have to work again. This is my last vacation day. So this is actually your vacation time, wow. So what is better, the, the annual church day or this? You don't have to answer, you know. But it, it does have, does it have similarities or parallels? So yeah, with the church day, I usually connect, like I associate a lot of people singing and playing the guitar that, that I haven't seen here, so. But what you already said, and what many people don't know, the, There's a lot of there's a big uh, Christian community here on the Republica. That's also why I'm doing the moderation on this and being the host here. And with this bot, what we bought that we we had the idea last year that we should have a connecting point or a meeting, a meetup where the Christian community meets up here. And you told me in the pre-talk that you in your own history were not that close to the church and to religion and you feel actually more at home with people who are not part of the church proper but what is what is in your message that is Christian what can they take out of it specifically the Christian if I'm being very honest then John Lennon is already walking alongside me in my path through life and With this message by John Lennon, everybody everybody can connect to it, you know, this message of peace and obvious, well, you have to forget about the fact that he's saying, okay, a world without religion, because obviously that's not for me, but would you say that freedom is the, the ultimate thing that everybody can agree on, maybe even all religions? Yes, I really hope that. And I always see that in my daily life within my congregation. I have so many diverse people, like, for example, Russian uh, natives that are now a part of Germany uh, that are obviously also affected by the war in, in some way. And we can still dream together as for, for peace. And through this dream of peace, we can build bridges. And even now, all over the world, in the name of religion, people are being killed. And do you have a, f I have a feeling that church and state are, um, are in, a, in an unholy alliance in Russia that basically bless the war. And I, what do you think about that? I think this is horrible. This is, this is horrible. It's not just this patriarch who 
decides that to be pro-war and also utters a lot of statements against uh, the gay community, for example, or we're still trying to be in touch and try to talk with him, but which I think is still correct, but it, it's it, all up to how you read the Bible. It's not, there's not a word for every situation where you uh, can take your immediate course of action from, or if you take yourself the liberty of interpreting how the text came about and what the background motivation was and what led to it. And that gives you the freedom then to also say, okay, this is not applicable to our daily lives anymore. You also said that um, there's uh, strong debates in the Christian church uh, about the current situation. It's a really, really difficult situation. Churches have a strong uh, history in uh, peace movement. Um, people demonstrated a lot for a long time against any kind of weapons. Well, currently we're in a not really new situation where uh, we have a dilemma that if we develop weapons, there, there will be a spiral of death. If we don't do it, the, the same will happen. And how does your belief help you in that uh, regard? With this dilemma. First of all, uh, it is a dilemma and you can't talk this away just with your faith. You're uh, you're uh, guilty whether you send weapons or you don't, and it's a difficult question you've got to ask yourself. And nobody is uh, coming unscathed out of that, and um, and it um, it knows that to to know uh, helps to know that people are not perfect, and we need to live in a world that isn't perfect, and it's. It's an extreme dilemma, and I noticed with, with my older colleagues who are, grew up with the peace movement, and they are really shaken at their, at their core. One thing that I know from the Protestant positioning to war topics, to ethical topics, you said that if there has to be a military, If you have to pay for military, let's try and do it um, and pay equally um, an equal amount for civil conflict uh, resolution. Now we're talking about 100, mil 100 billion for the Bundeswehr. What would you do? What should we do um, with the 100 billion for peace? Well, I think there should be a lot. And... Um, We have to think about um, after, how, what to do after this wartime, how to negotiate, and uh, you already have to keep this in mind. You shouldn't um, think, um, you know, first, you know, don't intervene, shouldn't intervene first and then, then make these thoughts. Um, For this uh, moment, that is uh, great. Thank you for your impulse and uh, our conversation. Thanks um, for you know for all people who are interested. Um, uh, on you know, thank you very much for your Instagram account. Uh, you have a look at the. I I, I recommend the Instagram account. Sorry.